listening to Game Static, episode 84. Hopefully you're having an incredible day today, whatever day you are listening or perhaps watching this podcast at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Sparky3. Give us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, be a friend, tell a friend that you're watching or listening. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, I'm Alex Light. Join with me as always. I got both the boys. I got Zach and John. Boys, how we doing? How we feeling? I'm doing good. Can't complain. Been a little bit. Last first podcast of the week. Only podcast of the week, at least for me. That is true. Because uh, Anime Plus is already on a break. Yep. Which, that's true. That's true. Uh, we took a random break last week. We wanted to focus more on our new show, Spark Bark. If you haven't listened to it yet, definitely listen to it. Shout out, shout out to you, Zach, because that one, that random one-liner you threw in is now the motto of the show. <laughs> like, bro, as soon as you said it, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, I got to hold on to that one. That's going to be the motto. Your all one-stop right. shop for BS and nonsense. So shout out to that. It's now on, like, the pod cover logo and all that stuff. Uh, and then, John, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm doing all right. I, did, I didn't realize Zach ever said that. But yep. It was whenever we were doing I mean, the introduction the, 20 minutes in. Let's re-looked at it. Yeah, that's what it's, oh. what it's called. Yep. Whenever we were doing our intro that he started at 20 minutes in. Yep. Oh. Yeah, you're just like, welcome to Spark Park. And then he immediately chimed in, your one-stop shop for BS and nonsense. And now that's just the motto of the show. Oh, I just stopped listening after I said my piece. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. Uh, but yeah, Spark Park, our newest show, uh, it's, it's in the same kind of realm as like talking about movies and stuff where it's like we're not doing it weekly. We're going to do it more and talk about movies and stuff. I will, yeah, I will say that because uh, I know the other boys, the Terrible Football Show, wants to get involved with that, which I'll shout out to Terrible Football Show, has officially reached its long break. Uh, we'll be doing an episode. Hey, we've had a hey, good run. We've had a good run. We'll be doing an episode in June and July and then back to weekly in August, which when we come back to weekly, we might be live every week. Cause that hey, li- that'll be good. That live stream for the draft went very, very well. I, we had a lot of fun, so we're still we're, we're looking at that right now. Uh, and then, of course, go check us out at our website, sparky3.com. You can sign up for free or sign up for five bucks a month. We definitely appreciate that. As well as the merch store, sparky3shop.com. Join the Discord. If you are a football fan, if you happen to be listening, you like football, join the Discord because we are, we, like, when, if we're going to be doing live streams, we, we want to pull people up and chat with them, kind of like a talk show sort of thing, right? Call them in. Let's do it. Uh, check out us out on Twitter at GameStaticPod where you can stay up to date with these random breaks that we don't necessarily have planned in advance. Sorry about that. Uh, and then of course, check out the other shows, Anime Man Plus, uh, Terrible Full Show, Spark Park, talking about movies and stuff. Uh, all right. With that said, uh, what's good, boys? How's it? Uh, how's everything going in you guys' lives right now? What do we want to chat about before we jump I mean, into stuff? I sent you that picture of my Thursday when I was off, that random box I found when cleaning out the shit. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So, John. Dude. What, so, a, what a find. So, me being my uh, old collecting games, found a shoebox full of nothing but uh, Super Nintendo games. There you go. Found, the shed. found Mario Kart, Super Street Fighter 2, Star Fox, Super Mario Land, Toy Story, <laughs> um, NBA Jam. Okay. And there was tons of other oddball ones like uh, Killer Instinct, had n- New Star Wars World, the Star Wars uh, Return of the Jedi game. Mm-hmm. Desert Strike, just a bunch of random ass games. And you just found that in a box. Yeah, it was just in a shoebox in the shed. I never looked for it because I thought all of our uh, Super Nintendo games disappeared whenever my sister took the Super Nintendo to college with her and then lost it during one of her many moves. I can feel that. (laughs) If there's anyone that can feel it, it's going to be John. (laughs) You've lost two consoles. What? More than that. No. Well, two that I know of. Wait, what are you thinking of? Uh, 3DS and the Wii U. Oh, yeah, but you got to tell you, I lost two PSPs, too. Oh, that is true. Do you still have your Dreamcast, or did you lose that? No, I got that. Okay, good, good, good. I ain't never losing that thing. Good. I've lost two N64s over time. Don't know what happened to those. They were like, um, what sucks about losing them is they were the like the, the see-through, like uh, crystallized colored oh, ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had three of those at one point. So here's why. I had my original one was the green one, which thankfully is the one I still have. Okay. There was a, you know, my, I mean, at least you knew my grandmother. Not tech savvy at all. We had a really bad thunderstorm. N64 stopped working. She just assumed it was N64. Got me a new one, which then I got the, the same styling as the green one. Yeah. But, but it was the red coloring. Uh, and then my grandpa, he got me the, like, indigo one to have at his house. Yeah, gotcha. So, like, you know. He didn't have to worry about taking it back and forth. Yeah. And then I come to find out later, the green one worked all along. It was just a power cord that got shot. But that red indigo one, no idea what happened to those, which is really depressing. 
But I still got the green one, so that's cool. Which was the uh, it was the jungle green. I think it was the one that came with Donkey Kong sixty four. Okay. Yeah, I think that was the, I think that was the addition that I had for my first N sixty four, which is pretty cool. I don't have the controller though. I don't know what happened to the controller. Controller is lost to time. <laughs> I still have my Super Nintendo and its cl- uh, original controllers, but that Super Nintendo, uh, I mean the N sixty four Jungle Green controller, lost to time. No idea where it's at. Yeah, no. In that box, I had all those games and two Super Nintendo controllers, but the Super Nintendo is long gone. It's been gone <laughs> for years. Yeah. See, my brother has the N sixty four we had growing up, but somehow like all the games we had, fucking gone. <laughs> no idea what happened to most of those. We, had, we it's like we had a couple. And then it's like the few we've bought over the years, but the majority of the ones we had, no idea what happened to them. Yeah, I was telling Zach that as well with my N64 collection. Is that like at one okay at one point my collection was legitimately across this fucking country at one point in time because yeah. Jared had some up in Ohio, Andy had some down in Florida. Like they they, they were legitimately across the country at one yeah. point. But I've recently been finding more like in like boxes and stuff just around the house during the move, and I've got them all in like this like pull out N64 box, and mm-hmm. like I only have like ten games, but it's still just like. I have ten games. I thought I only had like three or four, so I was like, okay, maybe I maybe I didn't lose as many as I thought. Now Super Nintendo, on the other hand, whew, no idea where all They're those. All gone. I have like maybe six or seven games, but the one cool thing that I have, and I told you this, is I have the Game Boy Player. Yes, that is a cool. That is a cool rare one. I think that I have. I like that one. That one's pretty dope. Yes. See, <laughs> see, I'm I'm hoping that kind of happens. Like if I ever actually go through a lot of the boxes I have from when I was moving around, right? Hopefully, some of the games end up in there. Yeah, because I know I have, I have one tote that's just full of old console games like Xbox games, PS2 games, all of that. So maybe it's in there somewhere. See, the unfortunate thing, like the few Super Nintendo games I really played a lot that I know are gone, because I know my sister had them, was like Super Mario World three and then mm. Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Ah, f f's in the chat there. That's depressing. Well, hopefully, if you find something, hopefully you don't get like a, a moment of like. Like, I, well, I know for Super Nintendo N64, they're just going to be there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's just not going to be in a box. But hopefully you don't have a moment of, like, pure bliss, just a pure disappointment like I did when I found my <laughs> uh, Pokemon Soul Silver box that it for blows me away was in phenomenal condition out in the barn and i got so pumped because like i didn't know i don't i don't know where my soul silver is and i'm like i'm opening up the manual's still in there i'm like oh whew, here we go no game because the case is in there too and i'm like i hate my life <laughs> it's like where the fuck did this game go it's been missing for years see no idea where any of the boxes for like my like my ds games or anything are right i have all my ds games they're just in a ziploc bag <laughs> <laughs> I actually kept the cases for my DS games and stuff. Same. Yeah. And I will say for like Super Nintendo and like the only people that I ever see actually kept boxes are just like YouTubers. Yeah. And I don't even feel like they kept them. They probably just like bought more online or something. But like, I, I mean, have you guys ever kept N64 or Super Nintendo box? Oh, that sure shit didn't. Super Nintendo, no. N64. I kept a f- I wish couple I did. for some years, but uh, eventually either one of my parents got rid of them just because they didn't know why we were keeping them right so we had we still had the cartridge so they just got rid of the box not thinking anything of it uh, i wish i would have kept mine i never had cool bo- boxes never had boxes for n64 games i would i just bought them all used okay fair enough fair enough i, I only had a few games that were were like new yeah, like i remember like super mario 64 was yeah smash brothers uh i think both the zeldas uh, and then after that, I think everything else was used that I got. Con- uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day was used. Yep. Okay, out of all the games that I still have, I'm, I'm glad I have that fucking game. That, that's, that, that is one of my all-time favorite games. I'm glad I still have that, if anything else. Like, I feel so, like your magical game right now would it be if we could do a Fire Emblems game in the Mass Effect world with a Conquer layover. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Speaking of Fire Emblem, I saw something the other day, and I thought it was so fucking cool. And I, I, I didn't know if either of you guys played it. I want to say I feel like you guys have played it, because uh, I want to say we've talked about it on the show. Do either of you guys play or act actively or at one point actively played Crusader uh, Kings 3? Was that either uh, of you? I dabbled with Crusader Kings 2 at one point in time. Okay. I just came across this on Twitter that someone's working on like a massive Fodlan mod. For uh, Crusader Kings uh, three, and I just started. It's on Steam. I, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. I saved it because I wanted to. Sh- I wanted to show you guys. I, I'll show you guys at some point. But I, dude, it looked awesome. I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't play Crusader Kings, but like, this looks legit. Like, this looks really cool. I mean, like, if, they're spending a lot of time on. Yeah, it. if they're putting some good time, yeah, it can turn out really well. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. Um, 
one random thing that I saw that I thought was funny, and you guys may have seen it too, because I I'll, I did share it uh, from the Game Static uh, account. Did you guys see the thing about Babylon's fall? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Guess what, John? <laughs> Man. Man. <laughs> it is now having the concurrent oh, players God. of one. One concurrent player is what it got down to. But, hey, we got seasons two and three content on the way, boys. So that one person will be extremely happy. Yeah. There's no coming back to this game. Like I don't know. Like I understand. Like they're wanting to try to bring it back and like make you know that you know, season two is apparently done and they're already working on season three. They need to fucking just stop. Whatever you're doing for season three, just go ahead and wrap it up with season two as well. Make it one massive, massive season and just call the game done because I mean, this game is dead. The only way they could do can re get anything from this is if they just made it free to play. Yeah, free to play. Release these and made money through your battle pass or cosmetics. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. I was like, is this game free yet? No. Yeah, that, that's how they're going to get players back. It's like free to play. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't know if they would want to write a check for it. Maybe Game Pass. I don't know if Microsoft would want to write a check for that game. Probably not, because it's only on PC, right? Well, no, it's it's on Xbox. It's on yeah. Xbox, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, if they get it on Game Pass, then you know, but I don't think Microsoft's going to want to write a check <laughs> for that Probably game. Not a big check. <laughs> no, it'd be a very small one. Um, the only other thing that uh, that popped out that I thought was been a while because it's still ongoing is the fucking xbox thing that we chat about for the show yeah like xbox servers like downloadable like digital games and shit completely all down like it's been down since since friday evening yep because i got in the mood to like ah you know it's been a while since i popped in some madden let's play some madden whatever download it on the xbox because it's like you know xbox series x it is you know while you know obviously ps5 and xbox series x are very comparable the xbox series s is a little bit pa- more powerful you know we do know that so like, hey, let's pop it in let's we'll see how it looks compared to ps5 whatever it's just like would not work would not work yep. I, I go to find out everything game wise is down i'm like oh yep. this fucking sucks it's still that way today and the funny thing is a lot of people are kind of theorizing that it's because of the huge flux of um ios users to xbox's uh servers uh, because Fortnite was added on Xbox Cloud on iOS. Now that's just a, uh, either a it, it's a mix of like some people are legitimately theorizing that this is true because it the, the servers just happened to crash right after this launch, as well as people just making memes about it. You know, just making jokes. That's all the Eastern fans of Fortnite. All. Oh, oh fun game. Oh, it's oh it's back on the iOS. Cool. Here's a way to play it because you know if you know if you're not a Fortnite player, Fortnite has not been on iOS for a while due to a massive lawsuit yeah. that happened. So I mean, it's still on Android and stuff, just not on iOS. So this is this is how iOS users can play the game now. It's through the the cloud app, whatever. But I, hopefully by the time we're done with this podcast, fucking Xbox will be back up and running. Nope. So I want to play. I want to actually you know getting getting a little bit more time right now to actually play some games. I picked up Switch Sports. It's you know switch sports. It's sports game. It's fun, very fun. I, I, I it's very fun. I've, I've only played like probably a couple hours of uh, worth of it, just kind of dicking off, having a good time. But it's one of those ones that obviously and naturally uh, you're gonna have a lot more fun playing with friends. Mm-hmm. I mean that's just a fact. So we got to play switch sports sometimes. So. Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I got curious about and was looking at the other day. Speaking of concurrent players and Microsoft, uh, I was checking the Steam Steam charts for some games. And uh, Halo Infinite, man. Oh, What's yeah. it at? It, it was the other day. It was down to like, I think it was like thirteen thousand people playing. Yeah. Which, I mean, for, for I mean, it was it's in it's still considered in Steam's top one hundred games. Yeah. And, like on their hundred charts list, but, I mean, you look at some of the games beating it right now, and it's yeah. just sad. It's sad to see. Yeah, and let's just go ahead and jump into that because that was one thing that was on our uh, script here for today. Um, is that you know Halo Season Two just launched this week, and it, I mean it's basically dead on arrival. I feel like, like I have seen no positive feedback about this season. Well, the only positive feedback that I've seen, and we chatted about this on Spark Bark just qu- real quick. They got rid of the armor cores besides legendary sets, which thank fucking god. Like that was so stupid with how they had like the, it was like between like I think it was just like what Mark Five and Six. I think. Well, I th- they were like. Three, three or four armor cores, yeah. like in the game, which I don't even know if you could use. Uh, like, I don't know if you could freely switch between them at the beginning, or if it was like you had to hit a certain level to use some of them. But you had it was level based unlocks basically in the in the battle pass. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it would be like you get a helmet for this armor core. Yep. So and then it's like if you didn't play with that one, it's like well I want that helmet. 
but I don't want to use that armor core. That's yeah, not the one I'm playing. Yeah, and see, that's how I felt because, like, I had, like, um, a couple of, like, the dumb cosmetic stuff that I bought in the shop, like the cat ears and, and the fucking rose, whatever. But that was in, like, the Spartan 5 armor core, which I guess is just shop stuff, while the Spartan 6 was all the cool shit that mm-hmm. you unlock. So I'm sitting here in Spartan 5 with, like, basic-ass shoulders, basic-ass, like, chest and stuff because I can't use this uh, this stuff i bought on with all my cool shoulder pads like my odst shoulder pads and all it was just so stupid like that's such a stupid concept especially when like leading up to game release they're like yeah you know if you want to use this shoulder pad with this you can do it you want to use this with this you can do it like that was like i remember that live stream of when they chat about that and then we got this stupid armor so i'm glad they got rid of the armor core uh, other than that it's just like two new maps like one new game mode the new battle pass and like that's it there you go there's season two boys i mean the whole armor core system, I I didn't like that anyway with the way they had it, where it's like you you have to level up the battle pass to get the different thing. I remember back in the good old Halo three days, you get Bingo. you you do your you do your achievements, you do your hard challenges, and you get the coolest armor in the game. It's yeah. like as long as you played the game and you did like from playing the game naturally, you would unlock the stuff. And if right. you, if you went out of your way to do the hard challenges, then you got the cool armor. Yeah, but I understand the whole. I understand how it is now. I mean, you want to have it where you can, you can have it where people can earn it, but they can also pay for it. Right. Because anything people can can pay to get sooner, they people will. are gonna do it. Oh, that looks really cool! I only had to drop like a hundred bucks. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> Straight up. See, now, you know, the thing is about Halo Infinite that's so goddamn infuriating. The game is fucking amazing. Like, you play the game, holy shit, it is it is a great modern Halo game. Like, it's, mean, it, it, it's fun. It's not too much of Call of Duty, like, in my opinion, 5 especially was, and 4 was really starting to flirt that way. Like, this feels like a great Halo game. It's just everything else. It's like, it's so bare bones. Like, the handling of the live service stuff, how they're doing it. Like, it's it's that, right? But, like, if they if they get this shit together and give us, like, the more game modes that it should have, you know, you know, really figure out how to run a live service game, bro, it's going to be absolutely an amazing game. Because the game itself, the gameplay is incredible. Like, they nailed that. Like, it is so good. Feels like Halo, but everything else is fucked. And that's the problem. Maybe one day they'll fix it. Someday. Yeah. The question is, is it going to be too late by then? Yeah, see, exactly. That's, is it going to be like season four or five a couple of years from now? I mean, now? possible. Which, at the rate it's going, yes. Yeah, that's the fucking... Because I feel if that would be mar- moderate to the side of getting them them getting out the multiplayer and Forge and then focusing yeah. on that. Forge has got to come out as soon as possible. they got to get this game into the hands of the, of the players. <laughs> like, that's, I'm standing by that statement. Uh, John, do you want to give us your uh, weekly Lost Ark update? How we how Ooh, we doing? Lost Ark. Hell yeah, Lo- the Lo- Lost Ark time. I need a sound effect. I gotta have a sound effect. We, and I need just what what you know. You gotta let me know a great sound effect from the game that I could put on the soundboard. We need something for this. But uh, for for Lost Ark, uh, just in the last uh, day day or two days, uh, we got our we got our uh, announcement of what is actually going to be in the May update, which. Uh, we know now in the next couple of weeks we'll be getting the second new class, the Destroyer class. Is that the Hammer? Yeah, it's Hammer Boy. Nice. Uh, we are getting the uh, what, what is it? the new. We're getting a new raid for uh, uh, Valton, which is bringing in new tier of accessories and and uh, and that in the relic set, which is going to be nice. Uh, be able to. You know, act, finish, basically finish, kind of fine tuning characters to the point we we will be able to, or the point that people are wanting to right now. Uh, getting new chaos dungeons, bosses, uh, new uh, field bosses, and uh, we're getting a new guardian raid as well. So, I mean, it'll it'll be it'll be fun. I'm I'm excited to see what's coming after. The destroyer class, the the content itself, I'm it's like currently probably not going to be able to do it the the week it comes out uh, because it's going to be locked at fourteen fifteen. 
not quite there yet, but be there shortly. So it might be a week or so afterwards, but then I'll be able to do it. But so we got we got that coming out, and then I I would expect probably summertime, two months later, we might get a new a, the next class. But that and that's that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. I'm not as big on the destroyer. A uh, friend of mine is l- really looking forward to playing it, but at least right now, I mean, Lost Ark feels feels fantastic. I'm still having a lot of fun. Uh, that's the main thing. Is how, how how long has it been out for us now over in the West? It's been like what about three months? Maybe it came out in fe- February. Yeah, February 14th, came out. 14th okay, of February, I believe. Yeah, and John's still grinding every so day. Three I, months. Yeah, every day I get on the computer, I'll just see it pop up down the bottom. June bugs on Rocket League or Lost Ark. Yep. <laughs> every day, that's right all I see. Always. <laughs> so, yep. Most of the time, it's Lost Ark. Like I'll be sitting there trying, you know, starting to get something uploaded for the show, and then all of a sudden, June bugs. I'll, I just got on Lost Ark. I'm like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I do my dailies, man. Yeah, Lost Ark time. <laughs> hey, I'm just glad the game is still rocking. What's the What's the player count still looking like? I'm, I imagine it's still very high. Uh. It, it was, it kind of fluctuates a little bit. Before the April update, it was like mid to high 350 to 400,000. Ever since the April update, been like mid to high 500,000. Granted, there's a lot of bots. Fair. So, but I mean, still, still a pretty decent player base. That's good. That's so, good. We'll say it's, it's retained better than I expected it to. Better than New World? Well, yeah, I mean, New World's at like, what, 20,000 ish? Yeah, New World's pretty. N- Those servers are very niche now. Yep. I mean, fun game if you can still get into it, but if you're in the wrong clan, you're sort of fucked or wrong faction. Right, yeah. It was all right. But yeah. I mean, Lost Ark, like I said, maintained. Maintain, I knew it was going to maintain better than New World did. Uh, s- still a little surprising that it's maintained about half of its player base, maybe mm-hmm. a little under half. But it's one of those. It'll get a, the the player numbers will bump up every time a new class comes out, which at the rate they're going right now, we're getting one every two two months or so. Mm-hmm. And at well, least, I mean, at least came for, out in April, right? Yeah. So they're gonna be a. Break in. I'm I'm expecting there to be a break in between because okay. with with this May update, we're also getting the class balances that Korea just got. Oh, okay. Uh, so I expect I expect it'll be two three months or so before we get the next or before we get the next couple characters to come out because they're releasing them at a very accelerated pace for the West. Gotcha. To try to catch up to where basically catch up so we have the classes that. The other regions have. And they can just unanimously global update once yeah. they got everyone at the... Yeah, because we have... Currently, we have, like, a fraction of the content. Yeah. I was just about to ask, like, how far behind are we? I mean, they've they've had the game for, like... Yeah, I know it's been out for... They've had the game for, like, five, six years. Yeah, like, I know it's, like, super behind, but, like, if you had to put it on a percentage scale, how far behind are we? Like, classes, just everything. Like, how far behind is the West? Classes, they... Classes, we still need... Uh, Scouter, Summoner, Arcana, uh, the Female Berserker class, Reaper, I don't know, there's eight or so classes that we don't have, and then a slew of raids and, like, different, various raids, uh, because, like, right now, the peak of our in-game content currently is a Abyss raid called, oh, uh... Argos, and uh, yeah, Argos, and then we're getting Vault in, in a couple weeks, and like we don't have, like right now we st- we don't have Legion raids, which is the next tier. If we don't have, uh, we're actually getting, uh, Challenge Guardian raids, which can be done I think three times a week for various rewards, which scales basically scales the balance, so it's not taking into account you being like five hundred item level higher than the than the uh, like boss you're fighting, mm. but uh, yeah, there's a there's a ton of content that we don't have yet, which peep uh, there's a large majority of people who are, or it's a large vocal group calling out for like wanting the content now. And at the same time, it's like we got a lot of content now. Like 
most of the most of the player base isn't going to be able to do it when it comes out. Right. It's like it's just the people that are either they're playing constantly or they're swiping their cards. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, it's at the end of the day, I mean, the the, the game's a pay to advance faster game. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it'll it, the content will come when it comes. There's I mean, there's classes I'm looking forward to coming out. Whenever they come out, I'm guarantee I'm gonna play them. But other than that, I'll just play it as I play it as I get th- to it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, next thing that I had here, and we already kind of chatted about it a little bit on Spark Bark, but I did want to also bring it up here since this is our video game podcast. Bring it up for the video game uh, fans here is uh, the Quarry, a uh, new game that's coming out here in like what two months? Summer. It got pushed back a week or two. But it's still summer, though. Yes, it's still summer. It's just now going to be on, like, the first week of July, I remember, okay. instead of June. Okay. Uh, this game, of course, being made by Supermassive, yep. who made Until Dawn. And uh, the little piece of news that came out that was got me and Zach pretty, in, you know, more interested than we already were, uh, was that this game has apparently 186 unique endings. And if you know anything about how Until Dawn goes, where it's just like any, you know, everyone can die and everyone can die at different points and everyone can, obviously, you can get everyone to survive, even though it's really hard to do that. Yes. Uh, just because of Josh? I think Josh was the problem child. Because it's a very niche way to get him to live. Well, to get him to live, you have to first collect, You have to do all the sister stuff. You have to do all the sister stuff and you have to collect all the items. Yeah. So, like, you know, it's possible. It's just hard. I don't think anyone cares to do that. <laughs> well, some uh, people do. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, 186 endings, bro. Like, that's insane. Like, I mean, uh, we have, like, a pretty decent-sized cast of, like, what, 8, 10 characters? Yeah, it's a so, fairly decent size. I mean, already, imme- like, immediately a lot of those endings are going to be, like, oh, you know, these two characters live. Oh, these other two characters live. Oh, all the characters live. Oh, these, like, six live. I you almost know? wonder... After having another week of thinking about this, for having so many endings, I wonder if there's they've made the possibility of doing a death run of where the, your story ends far before you even come close to the actual ending. Oh, dude, that would be so cool. I would love that. Because that would allow for many more endings because you would yeah. have a lot more dead-end roadblocks and whatnot from your choices. Oh, bro, that would be awesome. I hope that's a thing. I really do. I didn't even think about that. That would be That would be so cool. I'm here for that, where it's just like multiple points throughout all the branches. Like, oh, sorry, dead end of the game. Yeah, <laughs> you was, fucked up, and kid. It sort of made me think <laughs> of that because I was looking at uh, um, Detroit become human again, and right. our their third character in that, the female android, mm-hmm. her story can just completely die at any point because yeah. she's actually a side storyline to the other two androids. Where at any point, if you screw up or don't do something right, her story just ends. Yep. And then her story it can, like, once you get to, like, if you get to the end point of the game for her, like, she has so many different fucking endings. Yes. Like, when, if you actually get all the way to the end where... Because she has a lot of dead stop endings. Yeah, she does. Because, like, at the end, you can have, like, the ending where her and the child make it, uh, where all three of, like, the you know, because the guy that she's traveling with, yeah. the other android, all of you make it. But, like, there's the one where, like, he dies in the boat, whatever. Yeah. Like, bro, the, the, there's so many with her, like, where she can just get cut off at any point. Because it's like, you know, like, you know, when it comes to Connor... He can die like a thousand times, but he keeps coming back. But every time he does, he just loses, you know, he, yeah, he just like gets reset, obviously. Yeah. So that, that's that's the thing that's fascinating about that game and potentially Corey as well, because I would love that if they had multiple like dead end points. That'd be super cool. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that idea. Uh, I'm pumped for this game. I'm pumped for this game because it's coming out this summer. Uh, I plan to pick it up pretty quickly. Uh, I did see another game coming out this summer and it's one that caught my eye a while back uh i don't remember the name of it uh but it's like that open world i want to say it was an online uh zombie game um open like it's an online uh zombie game it was set to come out um daisy no 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 it was set to come out this summer um, oh, i know what game you're talking about but i i don't i have no i want to share i want to say oh uh, uh the day before the day before yeah i've been all i've been seeing pop up lately or articles about like this highly anticipated game being delayed. Yeah. Uh, it's actually apparently according to IGN, uh, currently steams most wish listed game, uh, but apparently is switching to unreal engine five. Oh, and because nice. of that, it is being delayed 
to March 2023 as I a result. Bet it is. But a lot of people are also pointing out because, like, while this game does look like pretty cool and like it caught my eye when I first kind of saw about it, it was supposed to come out in like a month. <laughs> Who's developing it? Uh, they're called Fantastic. You sure it's not Blue Box? <laughs> I mean, I don't think so. I see no blue boxes anywhere involved with Fantastic, but I mean, I've never heard of the publisher. Um, but um, uh, but yeah, it was this game was supposed to come out in like a month or two. So I, I saw like a lot of comments where people were just saying like, "Okay, yeah, this is cool that it's getting switched on Unreal Engine Five, but a lot of other people, like those same people, are pointing out it's just like." But let's be real. There was probably some other issues going on because this game was supposed to come out in a month or so, and we've heard nothing about it. So, you know, there was probably some other shit going on, whatever, where it's like if the game would have come out, it could have got came out in, like, just a completely busted-ass state, you know? Which would suck because this game does look pretty cool, uh, and it is on a lot of people's, like, wish list, obviously. I mean, and that very much could be a real thing because, I mean, if they're completely switching or updating to the next engine, that more or less just gives them a clean slate to redo the assets and whatnot to more or less do a hard, not a hard, but a soft scrap of the project and start over. Yeah, because it, it could have been like they're getting close to when it's supposed to supposed to ship out, and they're like, we still haven't fixed these problems. And it's like that idea has been floating around of, well, we like probably pre- in previous meetings, we're like, we could push it back and update it. And then they're like, you know what? That might actually be the way easier <laughs> way to do this. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because we can't figure this shit out. Right, right. So, I mean, it, it's probably going to work out better for it in the end. Just and like it's a, probably going to look amazing. Ex- yeah, and that's true. Because, dude, I don't know if I was fucking stupid. <laughs> you know, just a couple weeks back, I actually saw someone who uh, who had a hold of Unreal Unreal Engine 5 and actually remodeled a, a portion of a map from Valorant. Mm. And it just in Unreal Engine 5, they did that sort of a night scene, because I think the map's usually during the day, and it just gave it a whole new look. Mm-hmm. Dude, Unreal Engine 5 is insane. It is. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of the projects that are being made on it and coming out and stuff. Um, speaking of something where it's just like, yeah, maybe this is the way to go about and do it. We did finally get another update on uh, Sands of Time remake that yeah. has been radio I silent. Saw that. Yeah, I mean, like, it's been radio silent since they delayed it. Like, I mean, it got, it got delayed sometime last year because it was like, it was such like a half-assed attempt of a remake, you know, and, and ultimately got a lot of backlash, and because of that, it got delayed, and plus COVID also played a factor yep. into it and shit. But we did recently get an update that Sands of Time remake is now being handed over to Ubisoft Montreal, which is, number one, the original creators of the Sands of Time trilogy, and number mm-hmm. two, that's that's the big guns. Like, Montreal for Ubisoft, that is the big guns. They're the ones that work on, you know, like um, uh, like Assassin's Creed yep. games and Far Cry and shit. Like, like, they're handing this over to the big dogs. And, like, when I saw that, my first thought was, okay, maybe they're not just trying to just shove this thing out the fucking door. Because with, with, with this announcement... Or they, maybe they are because of the Assassin's Creed live service. All right, but piss off. <laughs> uh, but also with this announcement, they didn't. They still didn't give a date range. So that's one thing that I feel like is kind of a good sign. Because I mean, dude, Sands of Time trilogy is fucking dope. If anyone, if no one's ever played them, like they are, they are great games. How are you gonna feel when the first one comes out, Prince of Persia? And they go, this is also live service. So when they're finished, come on, both I, I, the two I, other games will come out. No, well, just one point too. It's like you can't expect them to give any sort of date. They just gave it to the A team, man. They gotta go through and see what they gotta fix and work on now. I know. They gotta I know. dig through that and go, man, what did B team fuck up? Yeah, see that yeah, and you know and you know when I saw this and, and what the joke you're making, the first thing I thought of was fucking Metroid Prime four, where it's like Bondi was the one working on it and like they just completely fucked it up and Nintendo's like all right, yo, you guys are the B team. All right, we're giving it back to, to Retro Studios. F- fix this. <laughs> Just fix it. And Retro's like, there's no fixing this. Fucking nuke it. <laughs> uh, Nintendo, we're just going to scrap this shit. We're doing our thing. You should have gave it to us in the first place. We did the first three, and we did fine. Um, but no, with the Sands of Time remake, though, this does give me hope that Ubisoft's taking it seriously, you know, and they're not just trying to push it out the door for a quick uh, cash grab that it would have made. It would have made a cash Probably. grab. Like, you know, an- another example of that, GTA Trilogy. 
you know, that was yeah. that, that was pushed out the door for it. I mean, they they that got their money out of that it. That wasn't but. pushed out the door. That was dragged, kicking and screaming. <laughs> it's like, no, we're not ready. We need more time. It's like, well, too bad. It's holiday season. Get out there and see. It's Christmas time, boys. Meanwhile, like the physical editions, like literally just came out like two months ago. Yeah. But you know, whatever. But either way, uh, I, that was a cool piece of news. That I was pretty excited about that because Sands of Time I hold very near and dear to my heart for a few different reasons. Number one, great games, yes, and number two, those were like it. Those are that like Sands of Time, the Lego Star Wars games, Soul Calibur three, and a couple other games are like some of the only games like that my mom like hardcore got into. Like you know she would play some games right, but like Sands of Time was one of the ones where like she was fucking addicted to the game. So it's like it, it, I, I don't want this to be a gigantic failure. Like please be good. That's all I ask for. Please. Uh, next little piece here we got. Uh, we did get the um, release date, or the, just the, the date, I guess, uh, for the Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase on the 12th, which is a Sunday. So we might try to live stream this. I know you won't be able to be there because you will have to work, but me and you might try to live stream this. We'll see how it goes. Wait, what time is this? Uh, it's about noon, I think. Noon or 1, around there. Maybe Are you talking to your neighbor then? Yeah, are you going to be busy? You can see me racking my brain. <laughs> are you going to be busy talking to your neighbor or something? Uh, just, something might come up. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll give that a provisional. Meh. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 I agree with you. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. The reason why I do want to try to do that is considering, like, you know, like the, like the kickoff shows for all this bullshit, we can't do because we're all working. We would all have to take the day off. Yeah. Actually, no, you're not working because the normal kickoff stuff is usually Thursday. So you're usually off. Oh, me, yeah, and, me, and, me and John would have to take off because they're always like at 11 o'clock. Yeah, because like super us, early. Summer Games Fest, they get the confirmed date for that as well, which is the 9th. thing it's the Thursday. And I it's kicking so. off at like 11 uh, or, yeah, about 11. So I'll just, I'm just going to be sitting in my car watching it. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at least that one's on a Sunday. Um, I would like to try to live stream it if possible. That would be cool. I, random thing about Summer Game Fest and even Game Awards, this, both of these were I thought they were really interesting. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, Jeff's going to have these in IMAX this year. Yeah. If, if you would like to see all of the announcements and all of the awards in beautiful IMAX quality, you can. Find an IMAX theater near you. And I'm just like, damn, that is that is very over the top. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know IMAX was still a thing. Yeah. Yep. yep. For the game awards, I might consider looking into that. For IMAX? <laughs> I mean that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. So we'll 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 we'll, we'll see. Here's the thing. We're gonna try to live stream it again. So that's the only hold up there about not about us not doing IMAX. I we're we're gonna try to live stream well, this shit, again. If we're gonna do that, I'm gonna get a projector and we're gonna use your damn wall. All right, that's fine. We can do that. But we're gonna try to live stream this again for the third time. The first time we did succeed, but it was only me and you. And it was very low budget with no video. And yes, crappy mics. Well, I had video. You were just on the call with me because it was it was on my stream, uh, just you know at, at, at Twitch, whatever, for my account. But you know now we have like our YouTube channel, Sparky Three. We have cameras. We'll have a TV. We'll use. You know, this TV has its purposes. It got used finally for the draft. Finally. Yeah, for the draft, it finally got used. So we'll try to do the, the live stream for um, the, the game awards for the third time in a row and see if we get it. But um, the Bethesda, the Xbox and Bethesda showcase. Uh, any predictions on what we're uh, that, okay? We've already been kind of told from Microsoft it's probably going to be another ninety-minute show, which we would expect. Yes. Uh, but any. Not obvious predictions you want to throw out because let's be honest, I I would say like twenty minutes plus of this show will be Starfield. More than likely, yeah, I mean, seeing easy. as we're getting closer to that date, I mean, I would hope it would be some sort of introduction to the next possible Bethesda project. Probably a nod to say, "Hey, Elder Scroll Six is somewhere on the burners." <laughs> hey, we're still working on this. Um, I can always hope that a Nod to the Perfect Dark game that we know is in production, and yep. maybe Fable. Fable's the one that I'm going to hope for. I don't think we're going to get it, but I'm going to hope for it. I don't either, but I still got my picture on my Xbox home of Malice and the boys. <laughs> for anyone who played Fable Legends and that game, that got fucking killed by Microsoft. Thanks, Microsoft. I still think uh, this was one of my uh, predictions coming this year. I still think we'll get the announcement and same year release date for Gears of War 6. That's one thing that I do think is going to be in this. Especially since it was in the uh, NVIDIA leak. 
That was one of the it games. Was, yeah, it? that was one of the games that was listed. Uh, Gear Six announced and same year release. I think it'll be a holiday release for Gear Six. So that'd be cool. Yeah, um, I'd say I don't think they're gonna do any nod to Elder Scrolls Six. Mm-hmm. I think that is they're reserving that for like after Starfield. Yeah, they don't Starfield because they know that it, as much Starfield as they talk, if they release. Because at most, I would think Elder Scrolls Six. The next thing we're going to get is either they're going to they're not going to talk about it for a while, and the next time they do, it's either going to be just the name, or like just like the sub name of what it is, or a full blown trailer with it at the end. I don't think either of those are happening until after Starfield. I agree. Yeah, yeah I don't want to expect anything big. Mm-hmm. I think if anything, the like the big like their big thing. Like their big surprise one would be, like a trailer for Fable, mm-hmm. if if anything, because Perfect Dark, we it's like we might get something on that, yeah. But I mean, and as cool as that would be, I think Fable would hit harder. Fable would hit harder. Fable would hit harder, and it's only going to hit harder with a trailer. Yes. So if they <laughs> if they mention it at all, we're going to get a full blown trailer for it. And also with Perfect Dark. uh to also kind of add some more fuel to that it may not be there is there's been some pretty decent developmental issues with oh, perfect there? yeah because that's made by that's being made by i think crystal dynamics i believe so uh is it crystal i think it's crystal uh yeah if you could fact check that for me i think it's crystal and i want to say they have been having some massive staffing issues people quitting the director for perfect dark changed twice i think like perfect dark has not had a good has not had a good time so far so i i don't think that will be there because of the issues fable is one that i would kind of put a little bit of stake in that okay maybe something of fable will be here well it's one of those things where it's every year they gotta have a they gotta have their main show and then they gotta have something as a big hitter yeah to, to end it out it is it, Crystal Dynamics. Okay, thank you. And they've mostly been using Starfield as kind of like their their big hitter mm-hmm. because they, they either open the show with it with like a big big trailer showing everything off, mm-hmm. or they're closing the show with it or doing something something like that with it. They need something else at this point because it's as excited as people are for Starfield, we all know it's coming. We all know that you're pushing it. We know it's your big game. Mm-hmm. We all expect a lot of info to be on it there. And then we have these other games that you just showed us a you showed us a screen grab of basically saying, "Hey, it's happening." Yeah, and we have nothing on it. Yeah, and they're all games everybody wants. Like everybody wants Fable. Yep. I was about to say the big drops that we could possibly see, which could either be a opener or a closer, would be Dragon Age, Mass Effect, oh, Fable. Yeah. Forgot about Dragon Age Four. And then probably going to get a lot of indie stuff because they're always big about showing off their. Uh, Indie studios, and we'll probably get a f- few good spotlights from those games because those indie games that all the studios under Microsoft do are there's usually some two or three very good ones, and then most of them are actually pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, our big ones are going to be, of course, the Starfield segment. Then our big three that we would get some more information would have to be Mass Effect, Fallout seventy six. Um, I, I would think that something from 76, 76 is yeah. possible. It's going to be there. Like, it's just a matter if, of if, how big it is. If we're talking strictly Bethesda, like, uh, is what they'll have at this show, mm-hmm. like, I will have I, something 76. Probably. Starfield, of course. Uh, that one vampire game they revealed last year, they got delayed. I don't remember the title. Was it? Was No, 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 no. Um, That's something different. Is no, that different? Okay. No, it was like uh, where there was four different characters. Uh, there was like some weird vampire character. They did like a this was like a full like fifteen minute thing they did at E three last year, but I don't remember what it's called. Um, I know it did not catch any of our eyes when we chat about it. I know we didn't have any interest in it, but I cannot remember what it's called. Um, and then the only other Bethesda thing that maybe could have something, but I very much doubt is the Indiana Jones project they're working on that you guys probably both forgot about. Just like I forgot about until about five minutes ago. Oh, the co-op one. Yep. Contraband. No, 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 no. They're, they're they're making an actual Indiana Jones game. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. It was just an announcement last year. I don't, I still don't think that's a good idea. An Indiana Jones game, (laughs) a big budget, triple a Indiana Jones game. No, I don't, I still don't think it's a good idea. They could have, it's like, 
at least don't announce it as an Indiana Jones game. It's like start the development on it, see how it's going to go, and then decide if it needs to be called an Indiana Jones game. Yeah, we'll we'll see how it, we'll we'll see how they're going to fucking take care. I of I mean, that. it could be great, but I don't know. I don't. It seem it still seems like a strange, like a strange franchise to try to like build a game around. Redfall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Redfall. That's what it was because that's quarter three of this year. Because was that the one that sort of sort of had that? Uh, no, not that. No. Well, it did actually <laughs> have that. But it had uh, that Fortnite look to it. I think. I think so. Maybe. I just know like it was one of those games where it's just like uh, everyone like had like their own s- sets. There was four different characters and they both had their own thing that they did special. Yeah. Fighting like a bunch of vampires or shit. Yeah, Redfall, quarter two, I mean quarter three, 2022 of this year is Starfield, of course. And then all the TBAs is Commander Keen, which is just a mobile game. Uh, Elder Scrolls, of course, Wolfenstein 3, forgot about that one. And then the untitled Indiana Jones Project. That's just from Bethesda alone. So I would Redfall will be there, something seventy six, Starfield, and then if we're talking over on the Xbox side of things, I still think Gear Six. Uh still uh something about probably Forza, because Forza hasn't come out yet, has it? Forza Horizons? The newest No Horizon the, hasn't come out yet. Okay, no. so yeah, something with that will show more show more of that off. Yeah, we'll get a ten minute segment on that. Yep. Yeah, honestly, yeah, we probably will. They, they, they the thing is, it's like we we kind of sigh at that and go, okay, here's the Forza set. Yeah. Forza sells like a motherfucker. Game. I know. <laughs> People love that game. Yeah. People love the Forza games. I mean, Horizon's good. I played in Horizon 1, 2, and 3. It's like, they're, they're games that I keep looking at and going, I'll, I'll download it and get into it, but then I don't ever download it and get into it. Right. So maybe when this one next one comes out, I'll actually try to get into it. Right, right. Uh, I would also expect... Just like some like layups that Xbox does from Summer Game Fest, you know, if something that's that gets shown off at Summer Game Fest gets shown off again here if it's going to be on Xbox. So I like a, a good example is Sonic Frontiers because I fully expect Sonic Frontiers at Summer Game Fest. I expect him to be wearing a fucking ammo belt and a gun, <laughs> and leave Sonic alone. <laughs> I'm pumped for Frontiers. Well, pumped but scared. It is. And I expect a Jim Carrey cameo. That'd be great. I'd love that, but he's done. He's going back into retirement. He did his two movies out of retirement. He's like, all right, I'm done. See you guys. I'm Audi. Audi 5K. I mean, that's movies. That's not cameos. Oh, well, I know, but it sounds like he's pretty done. It sounds like he wants to go back to his uh, his cave from from the sound of his. Uh, but Sonic Frontiers is one that I fully expect. Dragon Age 4 is one that I completely forgot about. So you bring up a good point there. That will probably be at like Summer Game Fest, if I I would guess. hope so if we don't hear a scene. I mean, the other thing that we might see on the Microsoft side of this is just a um, uh, white SOS flag of, hey, by the way, here's all this Halo content. (laughs) Look at all this coming out. Co-op's finally happening. That should have been there day one. (laughs) If If I were them, just... I just pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> I would, if I were them, I wouldn't fucking talk about it. <laughs> that's a sore spot right now. We don't talk about Halo Infinite. Yeah, that's, sorry. That's like, be like Microsoft. It's like they if they don't talk about it, there'd be an article come out where it's like an interview with them going, "Why didn't you talk about Halo?" And then them just going, "Shut the fuck up." It's like, <laughs> what, it's like, what, what are you talking about? Shut up. We're not talking about that here. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm pumped for uh, all the, you know, we're, we're about to get into the season, boys. You know, we're just a few weeks away of really getting into the season where we're going to get a lot of shit just back to back to back. And uh, next month, you know, got a couple of games that I plan to pick up immediately that I'm pretty excited for with Mario Strikers Battle League. Pretty pumped about that one. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. I am so immensely excited for yeah. Right now, there's a few games kind of scattered out that I'm excited for right now, but... It's it's quarter four that's like yeah quarter four is a big hitter Qu- for me quarter four Ooh. is looking good quarter four is looking fucking amazing I mean it looks looking a lot better than last quarter four yeah yo boys I gotta say for here at Sparky three just in general quarter four is just gonna be fucking balling you know because we're gonna have you know all the dope ass games coming out for us here at Game Static you and me we have a lot of good anime coming out in in, in shut up. <laughs> We have a lot of good anime coming out in quarter four. Terrible football show, maybe a live stream. Yo, Sparky 3 is going to be popping off this quarter three and quarter four. It's going to be a good time. 
All right. So it looks like we're resigned to recording on holidays again. <laughs> <laughs> That's still a thing. Don't worry. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Um, all right. So last piece here for the day uh, involving Square. This news kind of, it came out of nowhere, but it's something that like Square has been trying to do for a while. Yes. Yeah, so it's been very known that yeah. Square has been trying to do this. It's just was all of a sudden that we all found out this week or yeah, it was yeah, this week. That, that was this week news. Yeah. Uh, Square Enix has sold off all of their Western publishers to Embracer Group. So THQ Nordic, uh, essentially, uh, which is including IPs. And these are actual IPs that was, you know, that was actually named. Uh, so you know, there were others that's just like in question. Uh, Tomb Raider, obviously, is the big one. Yep. That is the one that everyone continued to talk about. Deus Ex was one that was mentioned, name-dropped, talked about. Uh, Legacy of Cain was another one, as well as Thief. It's been a while since we had anything Thief-related, so but that did get name-dropped for Thief. Um, some other IPs that it's just like, they're not confirmed, but everyone's assuming is going with it, is whatever Project Snowblind is, I didn't bother. I'm pretty to. sure that's a snowmobile game of some sort. Well, with how code names are, you never know. I mean, it, it could be a cooking game. I don't know. Well, code names are weird. I could, if that's a code name, cool. But I'm pretty sure there is a game called Snowblind. Out okay, there. Uh, Soul Reaver, Blood Omen, Gex, which that's like one of the the memes of the internet yes. is when's there a new Gex game? <laughs> and then Whiplash. Uh, there's no word on, of course, Avengers or uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, but with those, it's just like obviously those are owned by Disney, but they yes. they're made by Crystal Dynamics, and then whoever made. I don't remember who what what team did Guardians. Um, the other one I'm kind of curious about because I forget who's doing Midnight Suns. That's a great question. Uh, I looked it up. I forgot about it. fact who, check time because that's coming out this year too. It's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Because I forgot it already about. got pushed back <laughs> once. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about Marvel Midnight Suns, bro. Um, let's see, Midnight Suns. Uh, that is made by Fraxis Games. So okay. two, this is it's being published by two K. Right, yeah, Civilization. It, yeah, exactly. Bingo. Um, so, like I said, Square's been trying to pawn those off, those Western publishers, for a while. Uh, and while they're doing this, it's because, like, they're apparently pushing towards a massive focus on blockchain, so NFTs. And I thought that was really funny because, like, literally just this week, they like their, their blockchain whatever fucking just server completely crashed. So it's like, oh, well, that's just a middle finger to you, Square. But with this as well, it seems like Square's maybe trying to set themselves up for a potential purchase. Uh, because like the thing about the Western publishers that obviously I didn't know. And you know, it's just one of those things like until insiders come out and like say this, I don't think anyone really did. Cause like we look at some of the games that are from these Western publishers is like, okay, you know, some pretty notable games or games that has their niche fan bases. That's yeah. going to sell. Apparently these Western publishers like for square bro, it's like razor thin margins in terms of profit. Like there's like some of them where like, like literally zero percent. There's some where it's it. like one percent or two percent. Like it's razor thin profits. I mean, I'm not really surprised by that. Honestly. So they're that's one trying to get that off the books essentially for all the money they're dishing out for all the like you know for all those companies is could make it look more you know appealing for a potential purchase. I've seen a lot of rumors this week that Sony is buying Square. Both Japanese publishers primarily. Wouldn't necessarily shock me, but I, I didn't see any hard facts about this, but that was like the, the most common thing. And I, I did see a couple insiders say that they've kind of heard some rumors about it. Like I, I think Jeff Grubb was one where he said that he kind of heard a little bit about it, but wasn't hundred percent sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it, like I said, square trying to do this wasn't necessarily anything that was a secret. They've been trying to get rid of their Western uh, companies, but handing it over to Embracer group is pretty interesting. Um, how, so how, what, what's your boys' thoughts on this whole transaction and everything about it? I mean, as you said, we've known Square's been trying to do this for a while, so it's not totally shocking that it finally happened. It was more of an eventuality thing. I would be more curious in terms of what's actually going to happen with said studios that have now been sold. Are they going to be absorbed? Are they going to be shut down? Or are these IPs now going to be resold off to somebody else? Is the group that's now purchasing all this actually going to do anything with these is going to be my big question. Yeah, that was kind of what we chat about with with uh, Microsoft Activision Blizzard too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of of the same opinion, Zach. That is there where it's kind of like, the, yeah, they they've sold them off now. What are we? What's happening with these, like with these franchises now? Because it's like it's not necessarily stuff that I've been interested in, but I mean, like you said, there's some pretty notable names in there that. And and 
like people love these games. Yeah. So are are they selling them off, or is it just like whoever bought them? Are they just looking to have them and sell them off to someone else, or are mm. they looking to actually do something with them? And if they're not necessarily looking to do something with them, and basically looking for someone to buy it off of them, how long is it going to be before we see any of these again? Because mm-hmm. I mean, Legacy it came one of the big ones that was dropped. That has, it has a f- series that has had a fan base since PlayStation Two, because it literally hasn't had a game since PlayStation Two. Because one of the main voice actors died and just got cut. Mm. The series was just died right there. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the reasons, but there was other things that happened with the studio that was doing that. They killed Legacy of Kane. Then a big one being currently Tomb Raider. Because that's a fairly well-received series, even though I believe even though when all the games released, we were aware of that those did not sell well uh, profit-wise for investors and things like that, even though the series themselves are very well-received. Yeah, and a new one on the books. Yes. That's going to be made in Unreal Engine 5. Yeah. Um, I mean, Thief has a s- solid fan base. We haven't seen a game, an actual new game in the series, though, yeah. in a while. They've only had two, right? Because uh, it was a newer IP. Uh, yeah, so that was a new IP on the 360. No. I believe the one that came out on 360 was either the third or fourth game. Oh, shit. My bad. Because there, <laughs> there were several that came out on PC alone. Oh, okay. Gotcha. If I'm remembering correctly. And then... Uh, Deus Ex. Deus Ex. I That's mean, one that a lot of people were asking about. It's like, okay, you specifically named Deus Ex after Tomb Raider. Like, does that mean you're going to do something with it? Deus Ex is an interesting one because, I mean, it has three games in its franchise, and it's been a couple cent- years since Mankind uh, Divided came out. And it, that series is very lopsided, in my opinion. I mean, I always hear good things about it, but I also hear negative things about it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one of the games where, like, where there may be a f- several games for it, but s- like one game may be held above the rest, which sways people right. pretty heavily. So the series itself is held high because of one game, but you talk to other pe- someone else who's played the ones that may not be as good, and they're like, well, it's, I don't know why everybody's talking it up so much. Yeah. I think it's just like swayed by which which games people have actually played. I was about to say, Deus Ex is one of those games that it can draw a crowd, but it's not always the best received. Right, right. No, I could definitely agree to that. And then I'd be curious about all the other IPs that are in current question of whether they're actually going to go or not because they're all Western releases because most of those series have been dead since PlayStation, Gex. Xbox. <laughs> Fucking Gex. <laughs> There was actually a recently uh, a re-up on something with a trademark with Gex, and it got every, you know, the, Gex yeah, is one of the in internet. Europe. Yeah, Gex. We talked about it. Yeah, we did. That's right. That's right. We did. Yeah, Gex is just one of the internet memes. It's like, ooh, new Gex game. No, they were just <laughs> renewing the IP yeah. in Europe. Yeah, it, it really wasn't a big deal. I right, man, just think of it this way. Now that all of that's been sold off from Square, maybe they will do something. I mean, oh, that right? is the big question, because now that these are no longer going to be in Square's hands, it does allow for the opportunity of this new group, if they actually want to put something together or um, sell it off the IP to other people who may want to do something with it, whether it be a game or an adaptation, pray to God, not a live action, uh, or whatever they decide to do with these IPs. I feel like Embrace the Group would be one to maybe dive into the to the, to the bag of oldies, you know? I, I feel like they would do something like that. I, you know, just, just a kind of a feeling. I mean, it would be more or less a thing of, I mean, they saw some sort of value in buying all these companies. For only 300 mil, by the way. 300 mil. That's low compared to a lot of the sales I know, we've seen. I know. 300 mil and the sale will be done in like three months. Damn. Like it's set to close in like July or July to September range. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Like 300 mil. Like uh, <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that when we started this whole conversation. Like that was one of the, the big things that got people talking. I mean, so, I mean, Embracer Group's going to do something with it very obviously because they bought it because they saw some sort of right. profit or advantage to buying these off of Square Enix. Yeah, because there's no way they just spent 300 mil on Tomb Raider. Like, let's be real. Like, come on. Like, you, you got to you gotta dig into the bag here and yeah. do some other stuff. Well, they, they, it might just be the fact that they wanted to dig into the bag, mm-hmm. but the name Tomb Raider comes yeah. with it. Tomb Raider is a and, and pretty Yeah, it is. And, and it's like Tomb Raider may have made the price go up a little bit, but at the same time, Tomb Raider is the one out of... Out of the games on there, Tomb Raider is the one that catches people's attention. Let's consider Tomb Raider is the only one of the few games that has an actual 
live action films that people actually go back and watch. Mm-hmm. Mostly for Angelina Jolie, but hey. <laughs> Well, people are still going back to watch it. <laughs> That's all that matters. Uh, you know, the one thing that I'm going to be curious about is, you know, again, I know they don't own these IPs, but I still want to follow back up with Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm wondering, like, what's going to happen with those. Oh, Guardian, you know, uh, Avengers, of course, being just a live service, yeah. being made by Crystal Dynamics. Like, um, I'm assuming it's just business as usual then, you know, just keep on doing their thing since IP is owned by Disney. But, like, I guess Guardians is more so my question because, like, Guardians, like, it had a very interesting ending where it's like, this could just be the ending or there could be a sequel. I mean, it was kind of a mix of both. And, yeah. you know, Guardians, like, very, very good game. Let me stress this. and But not a lot of people picked it up. Like, it did okay in sales. It yes. didn't really find its fan base until it got to, to Game Pass. So, like, I'm just kind of curious now, since that was made by Square, one of the teams from Square, I don't remember which one, is a potential Guardian sequel kind of dead in the water now like you know what i mean like i hope not because like, i i really liked the first one but eh, that's just that's just me kind of speculating. It's, that's more or less a thing since that was because if it was an actual group with square that'd just be a deal with disney more than likely right so I hope, hopefully it's just short and sweet like that because i imagine like i said avengers is business as usual even though there's not a lot of business there to begin with but <laughs> you know that's a different story <laughs> hey it's still being updated hey, man they get, they got their players there's people that like that <laughs> the wakanda update helped I mean, it did. It, and, John, you're also right. <laughs> it has its players. You know, very few, but it has them. It's more than Babylon's Fall. So, like, it's got that going for it, I guess. Oh, man, Babylon's, what a fucking joke that game is. Jesus Christ. Uh, so, any other thoughts on um, the Square stuff? Uh, any real thoughts on the Sony potential purchase? I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, well, as this year especially, we've been talking about, or like for the purchase, past year, purchase, it's purchase. been, it's been, who's going to purchase what next? And if Square is going to go to somebody, PlayStation makes the most sense. Yeah, it does. I mean, it really does because I mean, Square Enix wasn't like a sole monopoly amongst the Japanese companies for a long time. Yeah. Till the most, I think probably 360 era, 360 PS3, where Square Enix started doing stuff more with Western developers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I also want to make a joke online that uh, Ubisoft and Square needs to merge so they can just be Squaresoft. You know, cause Again? What, yeah, because it used to be Squaresoft. So I saw, I saw that joke made a lot. <laughs> With Ubisoft, it's pretty much just going to be bought by a third party right now. Yeah, yeah. it's just going to be bought by some uh, some investor or whatever. That's all I've seen. Yeah. I mean, it's still just grinding down to the possibility of that we're going to have two or three big overall umbrella companies with all these studios underneath them at some point in time Yeah, that we're slowly seeing and then we'll have our offshoots here and there. Yeah, and that umbrella, by the way, is going to be like, you know, Microsoft, huge. It's going to be like Sony, pretty huge. It's Nintendo. (laughs) They're just kind of, they do their own thing, man. They don't buy buy companies. Nintendo survives. (laughs) They're not fucked about anyone else. We're here. Yeah. Of all of them, though, Nintendo's the one that has guaranteed money coming in. That's I mean, true. It's true. <laughs> it's it doesn't, true. It doesn't. They don't. They don't have to make new games. They really don't. No. They can just sell their <laughs> games again, and we know that because we keep buying them. Right. Yep. That hundred percent. The only company that like um, and Capcom followed in their suit. Have you seen how many times they released Resident Evil Four? That's true. <laughs> and we're getting the remake now. <laughs> like it's coming. It's I coming. Mean, it's, They've learned. It's like, oh man, people people love our old games. Do it again. <laughs> sell it. Sell it again. But we already sold it on the console. Do it again. again. I did it. Make okay. it shinier. It's like I guess I guess we'll call it the remastered ultimate edition or something. And I can already tell you, again. if they redo re- Resident Evil Five, I'll probably buy that. I enjoyed Resident Evil Five, even with the fucking boulder punching. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't get very far into Resident Evil Five. You didn't get to the boulder punching? No. It was stupid. No, did not get to that. Did not get to that. Uh, Resident Evil 6, I actually played a lot of. Uh, me I'm sorry. And, yeah, yeah. Me and Brady co opt um, I think, two of the stories. But one of the stories just... We, I'm sorry. We couldn't finish it. It was, we, it was just... Was it, it the was, last one with the jackass with... Uh, I forget her name. Is that like the original protagonist? No. Okay, because there was like Leon, Chris, and who was the, and then the other guy? Then the jackass. 
then yes, we did not finish the jackass. We fin- we did Leon first. Leon was fine. Leon's Leon was all right. Chris was sort of meh. Yeah. And uh, from what I remember from seeing in six, because the third route was a new guy who. Yep. He was sort of mentioned somewhere in the story, but he's with the chick from the fourth game now, grown yep. up. And they're lovers, and you're sort of just like. Yeah, we did not finish that story. Me and Brady, we we, we went we like literally as I just described is how it went. We we played Leon's first. Pretty good time. Not a lot of complaints. Played Chris. Eh, it was it was fun. You know, we had we you know we enjoyed. It. We had some laughs. It was it was really a thing of Leon was sort of classic Resident Evil. Yeah. Chris was the modern Resident Evil, and then I think his name was Jake or Jack or something. Yeah, it was Jake. Yeah. Jake, yeah. and it was just like here's a thing, and we're all going. Huh. 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 <laughs> then we got Resident Evil 7, and they were just like, hey, we did this. And people went, oh, that's good. Then they did Resident Evil 8, and when people went, ooh. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, Capcom can still re-release the original ones, and people will still buy it. Right, right. Speaking of Capcom, very random. I just want to shout this out because I thought it was so fucking cool. Um, G Fuel is partnered with Capcom for, um, yeah, with, for a Mega Man flavor this time. Uh, dope, cool, whatever. The flavor doesn't like hardcore pump me up. It's like a vanilla blue raspberry. So eh, I don't know about that. But I did go ahead and go on the wish list because, bro, that shaker is cool as shit. Because, you know, they've always had the same shaker designs, whatever. Yeah. They change the color. No, this shaker's in the shape of Mega Man's blaster that you drink. I'm like, bro, that is so cool. It's like, I want that. That's awesome. Uh, no, a point I was going to make about Nintendo and like not buying people, whatever. Like, like, like John saying, Nintendo has guaranteed cash. They're going to do their thing, yes. and they're cool with that. The only time that, like, I am legitimately upset they did not buy a company was Alpha Dream. That is the only company I am upset that they did not purchase. Because Alpha Dream, like, you know, made some of, like, the best RPGs out there with the Mario and Luigi saga. Beginning to end, they made every single game. And Nintendo just fucking let them die and go bankrupt. Now they're no longer a company. Like, come on, man, bro. Like, they, like they made like one of the, like some fucking amazing RPGs for you with Mario and Luigi Saga. You just let them die. It was like 2019, I think they died, went bankrupt. Nintendo could have bought them for cheap then too, but they didn't. That's the only time I'm I'm upset with Nintendo not buying someone. Other than that, Nintendo, I don't even think Nintendo owns. Um, uh, I don't think they even, they even own uh, Hal, who who's I made. I don't think they do. Who's made all the Smash Brothers stuff? I don't even think they own them. Like, I'm pretty sure they Nintendo don't. really just does their own thing. <laughs> Hey, they got guaranteed money. That's all that matters. Uh, any more? Any other thoughts on anything, boys? If not, we can go ahead and start looking to wrap things up. Anything we chat about? Anything else popping in your mind? We want to talk about real quick. Uh, I I got nothing. So fell into a trap. Uh oh. I mentioned this to John the other day. So sports games, it's a oh. mad thing of just going. Oh yeah, screw it. I'll mess with it. Yeah, fell in that trap. Bought WWE 2K22. Yeah, I've low key been considering picking it up. <laughs> I'm actually sort of happy with the changes they made since the last wrestling game. It actually has a very different feel. Well, 22, I mean, not 20, uh, uh, 2K20 stunk. Yeah, that's what that's, I remember yeah, hearing. It that's, was bad. That's the last one I got, and then that kind of. That kind of swore, made me swear it off for a little while. If you guys want to know how bad 2K20 was, right? Like, you know, when it comes to wrestling games, oh, they I, don't... I had it. I, I had bad. it. I had it briefly as well. Uh, I had it literally for like two oh, hours. did you refund it? Yeah, I had. An, I was in within the window to refund. If you want to know exactly how bad 2K20 was, and let me stress this. I know that uh, WWE games don't have a huge following like on streams and stuff, right? I'm very aware of that. But if we want to talk about how bad it is, like deep into its release, at one point I very specifically remember uh, 2K20 having literally 20 viewers on Twitch at the time, while 2K19 had like 3,000. Damn. If that tells you anything about how bad 20 was, like 20, like you know, I like, remember her 20 hearing, was so bad. That's the reason 2K21 didn't come out. I was about to say I remember 20 being a dumpster fire. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't enjoyed uh, one of the 2K games since 14. Like, I bought 15. That was the one that had John Cena on it. I, I picked up 16 as well, which had, I think I had Stone Cold. Uh, didn't bother with 17 or 18. Tried 19, didn't care for it. Tried 20, didn't care for it. But I think 18 was the last one I bought before this one. But, like, um, the, the, the WWE tw- uh, 12, 
WWE 13, and then WWE 2K 14. Those, all three of those I enjoyed, especially 2K 14. That was the one that had, like, The Rock and, like, Daniel Bryan on it. Mm-hmm. Those that, that was actually a very, very fun game. Uh, but 2K22 actually does look low-key kind of I fun. mean, I've been enjoying it for the most part. I mean, there's a couple glitches I've come across, but nothing just absolutely game-breaking for me. I know there was quite a few glitches when it came out that people were complaining about, but I've only personally ran into a few that they weren't game-breaking. It was just sort of a just quick reset, which doesn't take long, and I was good to go. Right. Yeah, yeah I told him, told Zach that uh, when he mentioned that, I've actually been watching uh, some some of uh, the the twenty two like content for it because there's there's some like creators that I I watch where they they've been doing like whole pay per view events where like they created characters of themselves like their personas and they just they'll do like a full pay per view card or something and they just have the AI go at it and they just it, and it's like they're the announcers. I've He's seen that. commentating oh, yeah. the matches. Yeah. Man, it's it's fun to watch. And I mean, it is, dude. And all the game modes they have have been very entertaining. So they got the usual showcase yep. for you, for Rey Mysterio, which unlike previous showcase, it's more of like an interactive movie rather than actual matches mm-hmm. where you just do objectives while doing the match. Then it switches to actual footage from the actual matches mm-hmm. from Mysterio, which is all right. Just a bunch of unlocks. Uh, universe is universe. Yep. They did add a new thing to it, though, where there's the superstar mode, which instead of running the whole universe, you just control a very specific superstar and leading them on their journey through the WWE and whatnot, mm. just making the choices for them as a superstar. Uh, the My GM mode, which is fairly interesting, which is just you being a GM and competing against another show. Oh, the oh, that's kind of yeah, cool. So yeah. you, can, you can choose to be a Raw or SmackDown and do your thing? Well, you actually choose your GM, who has a has a power card, what they're called. Then you choose what show you're going to represent. And then you actually go straight into a draft and actually get to draft from pool of superstars. Okay. And then you do set up how many weeks you're going to do and do set up regular show cards, pay-per-view cards, do everything from assigning who does what to what kind of stage it's going to be in, uh, lighting, crews, whatnot. And then also looking, buying up free agents with money you have and things like that just to compete against the other show. Okay. I've been using power cars, which allow you to do things. One thing that I that just randomly popped up in my um, uh, my YouTube recommended or whatever for uh, WD two K twenty two, and man, this is not like it's in, it's not like it's anything new. It's not like I'm breaking any massive news. I mean, it's been here for probably the past multiple games, but I just saw it. It just popped up where it's just like it's a uh, the the music mod, the, yeah. the sound the sound editor or whatever, and I was just like, okay, that's actually pretty dope because like I guess that's one of the like the small little beefs that really killed like two K fifteen and onward for me mm-hmm. is that you couldn't have custom music anymore. Yep, because like that's what I loved so much about thirteen and two K fourteen especially because you know those are three sixty right. Yeah, so you just get like a, a disc with all your music and burn it onto your console and use those, and that was that was cool because that's i invested so much time into just creating move sets because like i also saw that for 2k22 this did not come back but no create a finisher i liked create a finisher it was was okay it was okay it wasn't anything great i liked it because it's just like further getting more detailed with creation because i had like so many created characters bro Mm -hmm. and that's where i had the most fun with the games is creating like 15 different uh superstars and throwing them in and with all their own custom music i pick out just like songs i like whatever and that was that was dope uh so the, the sound editor kind of piqued my interest on that to pick it up on steam then just the other two game modes it was, it has My Faction, which is like, think of a mobile game where you're collecting yeah. wrestling cards, which allows you to use them in your team and whatnot and stuff. It's a mobile game within it, but it's not as harsh as actual mobile games. It's actually, you can continue with it fairly consistently if you just mess with it and play it. Man, mm. you had me and you lost me. <laughs> yeah. So the main mobile aspect that it forgoes is it's not a hard microtransaction. You can completely play the mode without any microtransactions if you really want to. Microtransactions just make it faster. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I get that. I like to play. I like to play pay to win uh, mobile games and then compete <laughs> against the and, and compete against the whales <laughs> as a free to play player. And then uh, you, you have the my rise. You really going in swinging. <laughs> then you have the my rise mode, which is you create your own custom superstar for either the male or female division, mm-hmm. and it's a story mode for it. And it's actually two different stories based on which division you go into. 
in in terms of the stories, like when it comes to WWE, like you know, some of the years have been pretty like lackluster. Mm-hmm. Is this one like any? Is this one worth a shit? Because like now, granted, like I said, there's a large stretch where I did not play games that I mentioned, but like 2K15s sucked in my opinion. From what I saw of, tw- of 19 and 20, looked like it sucked in my opinion. Like the last time I personally remember there being like entertaining stories for your like your custom mode goes all the way back to two, uh, WWE 12. Yeah, which that was a very interesting, unique story because it was a three parter. Yes. Uh, where you had to play each part where you started off as the villain story playing yep. as Sheamus and his story ends when he wins like every belt. He has a WWE championship, world heavyweight, United States, intercontinental, I think the European championship. And he's sitting there celebrating at WrestleMania and the Triple H's music hits. And you play the outsider story as Triple H. And then you play the hero story as your custom character. That was a fun trilogy. I love the shit out of that. That was so much fun. How is it? Does this mode, does this game have a good story? Is it entertaining? I mean, it's okay. I mean, it starts you with at the PC. And then when you finish up the PC, you get to choose based on how you do on the last match. You get to choose what show you go on to. And more or less what it is, it has story opportunities that you can follow, which are small, more or less stories that you've chosen to follow in that show that runs through then just resets you. So, I mean, it allows you to choose what stories you want to see your character run with. Mm. So, I mean, it's okay. It's, it's not like a hard direct story. It's more or less a here's storylines that have popped up for you. What do you want to run with and see? Gotcha. Well, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting that this is your, uh, your sports fix this time is there to be, yeah. Is it like once a year, basically? It's kind of the vibe. Usually once a, every couple of years, but so far I've hit up baseball and wrestling. Okay. Well, hopefully next year your um, uh, your random sports game will be college football. Odds are my next one's either going to be basketball or uh, what's the other one I mess with from periodically? Cricket. FIFA? Hockey. Oh, NHL? Yeah. I am so bad at NHL games. I want to be better because I, I, I want to get more into the sport because uh, I do have a team that I do follow, even though I don't know anything about the sport. I do follow the Los Angeles Kings, though. I can only name two players on the team, Dustin Brown Jonathan Quick. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Don't know anyone else. <laughs> I don't know the rules for the sport, but I do have a team. I have a story for why I carry that. I follow that team because it's just a giant meme. That's All it. Righty. Um, but I would like to be better at those games, but God damn it, I am bad. Uh, I will say I, I, I'm in that sports mood right now, which is why I was trying to play Madden earlier. But I, I'm also been hard debating on picking up 2K22 as well as uh, hopping back into a basketball game because uh, NBA 2K22 is on Game Pass. Yep. And I haven't played an NBA game like actually pretty hardcore. And God. NBA like Live 09. <laughs> I think my last one I played was Live 20. Yeah, like NBA Live 09. I think that was the one with Tony Parker on the front. Like, so that was the last time I really dedicated to an NBA game. So I might try that out. But next year, college football, though, hopefully, fingers crossed, it should. But it is still by EA, who has done kind of so so on Madden. So I do have concerns. But at least they hired some people from College Football Revamp. I can only that, hope. That's a big win. You know, but that's a, that's a game that uh, if it comes out and it's not dog shit, it's going to be very hard to pull me away from that game for a while. I'm, I will say that up front because me and Brady are going to go to town because, dude, the fr- the dynasty that we had for NCAA 14, like we literally ran, I think, 35 years in game. That like, game apparently holds up because anytime I see it in a store, it's like one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, it's still a fun game. Like NCAA fourteen is arguably better than some of the most recent Madden's. Like yeah. <laughs> NCAA fourteen is great. Apparently, that game holds up because the complete unbox version is like, oh, somewhere between one hundred thirty and one hundred fifty. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's all. That's why I'm glad Monster works. I mean, I just you know I, I was playing college football revamp not long ago since I got my new PC. Super super fun. Uh, before that, I was uh, do I I ran probably about ten years um, in the game for a dynasty around when we got the snow that snow week last last year in February. I, I just randomly popped on to like fourteen, played it the entire week, ran ten years uh, in the game in one week. Dude, that game holds up. It is fun. It is a fun sports game. That is a top tier sports game. John is just like you and your sports games. Well, John plays baseball. He plays it. fishing. That's true. <laughs> John needs like a top tier fishing game to come out. I've tried a couple on Game Pass. They're all shit. <laughs> yeah, because Rappel, Rappel doesn't make them anymore. No, well. 
All right, well, wrap All it up, right. boys. We filmed sure, it. Might yeah, as well. Let's do it. Wrap it up. So, like, comment, subscribe, rate, whatever your platform allows. It does help if you're watching this on YouTube. And you can hit that subscribe button to really help us out build our community on YouTube. And you can hit the bell if you ever want to know anything shows up, whether it be this show, our new one, Spark Bark, or talking about movies and stuff whenever we do that one next. Maybe it'll be uh, Doctor Strange. Who knows? Don't know yet. I, I'll watch it, and then we can do it. Yeah, maybe. Yep, I'm doing it soon. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you very much for uh, sticking it out with us. And hopefully we'll see you here next week. Uh, do everything that they said and more. Uh, and then, of course, go check us out at our website, sparky3.com. You can sign up for free, or you can sign up for five bucks a month, get access to early podcast episodes, such as this episode right here that you're listening to was up for early access on the premium tier. Uh, merch store, sparky3shop.com. Go pick up a trash can shirt. We'd appreciate that. Uh, join the Discord. That will be linked down in the description below. And go follow us at Twitter, uh, at GameStheticPod. Uh, so that way you can stay up to date when we randomly go on a break that we did not announce in the episode. Apologies about that. Uh, and I think that's it. So until next time, guys, see ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.